to The Purpose Podcast. My name is Rachel, and I'm here with my husband, Zach, and we really believe that God has designed you with a specific purpose to win the world, and we're here to inspire you to walk in that purpose, and today, we're really excited to share with you some ways that you can daily live out that purpose of winning your world. So I am, Zach, why don't you tell us a little bit about our value that we're going to talk through today? and these handles that we're going to start working through just for the month of October. Okay, so we have values that we use to lead with, and it's love God, love people, discover purpose, and win your world. And so we're thrilled to walk you through something we call handles. And so we put handles with each of these values to help you live it out. Because when we say something so grandiose as win your world, win your world to Jesus, that seems like I don't know how to do that. And so this month, we're going to give you a step in each of those values, a step in winning your world, a step in loving God, a step in discovering purpose, a step in loving people. And so that's what we're going to do. These are going to be these are going to be a quicker podcast with some stories, some inspiration, and then an action step for you so that this week, instead of learning a bunch of information, we want you to live out transformation. And so this week, we're going to talk about the value of winning your world. And you guys can see, if you're on YouTube, you see I have some cards in front of me. If you are on the winning team, you actually get what we call a culture deck. And it's these these culture cards that they have on there, all of our handles and our values, and actually a lot of content for you to be able to grow and equip uh, what where you need to so that you can win the world around you. But either way, this week we're talking about the value of win your world, which again, can be the most challenging, and the handle that we want to give you to live out is we include people in our world. So we include people in our world. Now, this is this is hard, and we're going to tell some stories about how we've done this, and we're going to give you one action step for you to do, but I remember something that really impacted me. I was talking to a staff member at Faith Promise, and she loves people. She really does. She loves God. She wants to win her world. And every month, if you're a staff member at Faith Promise, there's an expectation that you share your faith. And so in our meeting, we were talking, and she just said, Zach, I realize I have a garage door opener, and I open my garage door, I drive to work, I see people at work, and then when I'm pulling up my street, I click my garage door again, I pull in there, shut it, and I could go a whole week without talking to anybody. And now you click and pull your groceries, now just... Life is made where if we're not intentional, we won't be around people. But I'm actually have Rachel read a passage that was key as Rachel and I were praying for the vision for the future of faith promise and we believe for the kingdom. And this passage that she's going to read was paramount in coming up with the vision of winning your world, but also that gives us the passion for your purpose. So, Babe, yeah. would you read that? So this is so good. It's out of 1 Corinthians, and it's chapter 9, verses 19 through 23. And this is Paul talking. And I want us to remember, Paul was not one of the 12 disciples that walked with Jesus while he was living. Paul received the revelation of Christ from him after Christ died and was resurrected from the cross, which is so unique and special that Paul chose to follow Jesus. He was radically converted, and this is how he chose to talk about winning the world. So we're going to start again in chapter 9, verses 19 through 23. And it says, Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. And to the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save someone. And I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Things. I think that's so powerful for us. Like we get to share in the blessings of the gospel when we are winning our world. We miss out on part of the gospel if we don't share it. Mm -hmm. and, and again, the handle for the week to help us make progress towards winning your world is we include people 
in your world. So you're, you're going to include people in. And if you take an inventory, when's the last time you invited somebody new into your world? So one of the things we do at Faith Promise is we have groups, right? You may have heard them called small groups or whatever. And I'm telling you, when you start talking to people about either adding people to their group or multiplying their group or whatever it might be, I'm telling you, it is it is like traumatic. Well, can you just, and if you've never been to a small group before, it feels a little strange mm-hmm. to go to some stranger's house. You don't know what's there. You don't know if they keep their house clean, if they wash their, you know, wipe the toilet down before you got there. There are concerns that you might have when it comes to joining a group, meeting new people, and inviting them to be a part of your world or entering into someone else's world. Do you wipe the toilet down before people come over? Yes, I clean that clean. In the house. Me too. Me too. Totally. Totally. It's your it's your animal children that make us have to do that. Oh, it is for it's sure, River. Me. He leaves skid marks on the toilet. I'm not sure, I'm not how, sure how you it's do happening. that, but that I'm is not sure how it's happening. for real. Okay, TMI. Judging anyway. by the studio audience, they're <laughs> disgusted. Um, <laughs> but something just about that passage is that whenever you look at the people that Paul reached, they weren't like him. And so for you to say, hey, I, you know, I don't know people who have the same interests as me and stuff like that. Well, biblically, the mandate we've been given, it's beyond that. It, there's something more core to who you are than your hobbies. There's something more core to who you are than your preferences. And that's that you're a son or a daughter of the Most High King. That's that you are an ambassador. It says that we've been given the ministry of reconciliation that God was making his appeal to people around you through you. You're his ambassador. But again, what's the step to take? Because maybe you don't know all the answers of how to share your faith and stuff like that. Let me ask you, go to the handle. Are you including people in your world? Are you inviting other people in? In whatever space that looks like, a, a simple space for us right now is whenever I go to Rivers football practice, I wish, I would love to sit in my car and watch TikTok. That's what I would like to do, right? But I need to go out there. I need to get around some of those other dads and moms. I need to have some conversations. How's work going? How's life going? How's school going for your kids? That's including people. And then you know what? I'm actually going to go golfing with two of the dads. I want to include them in my world because there's something more important than my preference, and that's the kingdom. And so part of winning your world is... It, it, it is uh, it is including people. That That is a step you can take to get you closer to winning your world. But we have a practice that we do as a family. It's really impacted our kids. And oh, we had yeah. a pretty cool one happen recently. So, yeah, so we, before you tell them what oh, happened, you yeah. kind of tell them what we do. Yes. So we, whenever we go out to eat, we ask our waiter or waitress, uh, we always tell them, hey, we're people who um, believe that God moves in the lives of those around us. And we've seen God do great things. And we want to pray for you. Is there anything that we can be praying for? And uh, we have never had anybody tell us no ever. Some people are like, oh, well, you can, there's nothing for me, but you just pray for world peace and they just kind of brush it off. The vast majority, I would say 98% of people, and we've asked hundreds of people this question, and um, they always share something. You know, they're, oh, my, well, you can't pray for me, but you could pray for my mom. Um, hey, you know, oh, our co- my coworker had this happen. Could you pray for her? And we pray for that thing. And And sometimes a door is open for us to meet the need that they share with us. Um, And it might just be just to be kind. They have this desperate need. Most people are desperate for love and have that haven't been satisfied, haven't been seen or heard. And to be seen and heard is so important. And you can meet that need immediately. So we were at Cracker Barrel. River plays um, football games on Saturday morning. And uh, so we went to Cracker Barrel to celebrate games and because we like pancakes and so we're at Cracker Bowl we have this um, waiter his name is Scotty and he is we just prophesying over him and that just means you speak words of life that's the like the New Testament definition of prophecy is to declare words of life over people encouragement first Corinthians 14 yes and so we're encouraged we're just encouraging Scotty he's so personable he was so kind he's doing such a great job and so we're just encouraging him we ask him hey you know are you in school because he's younger he's in school at Pellissippi and we're just chit-chatting with him and um 
at the end of our, you know, we pray for him. We ask him, hey, can we pray for your meal? And he is like visibly moved. And he says, oh my goodness, no one's ever asked me that before. And he's a little overwhelmed. So he says, oh yes, he shares with us and um, we are praying for his school, and so we pray for his school. And what's really unique is our kids um, became engaged in this as well. So we're we are ending the meal, and JL, who had received some money earlier for performing some um, additional work outside of her chores in our home, she got paid for her labor, and she takes her three dollars and un unbeknownst to us, she just gets up and she walks up to Scotty and hands him the money. And he just kind of be like, oh, okay. And uh, I'm like, we're really going to tip you, not just $3. And um, Zach, at the end of our meal, I just believed that uh, the Lord, I just pray for God to um, to tell me things about people so that we can bless them and pray for them. And so I had shared something I just believe the Lord had laid on my heart for Zach to go and, and share. Because if it's a man, then Zach will go and um, connect with him. If it's a woman, I will. And uh, so Zach waits around, <laughs> kind of like, um, you know, weirdo, for him to come back out of the kitchen after we've um, finished. And, you know, it's not always graceful. Things are just not always graceful. But uh, you're graceful, aren't you? I try to be. You try to be. And so Scotty comes back out of the kitchen. And Zach has one of our cards. We had some car, um, some cards um, that we handed out, and they just say that we, um, God loves you, and we do too. And it just has um, a way for them to connect with Faith Promise. And Scotty, Zach has this connection with Scotty. He just tells him how um, he tells him what I had uh, believed that God had for him. To he wanted to share with him, hey, that we love you and and we believe in you. Left him his phone. Zach gave him his phone number, and he asked, hey, what, was that her money? And Zach said, well, yeah, she wanted you to know that God loves you and she wanted to bless you. And again, Scotty is moved visibly by our daughter's response to meet um, people where they are and to love them and bless them. And what's really cool is we have this interaction with Scotty. He is encouraged. And then the next week we go back to Cracker Barrel. Very health conscious. And we happen to be sat again in Scotty's section. And his response to watching us walk in, he's not from Tennessee, and it was like family coming in. He was like, oh, man, I know seeing you guys that it's going to be a great day. And I was like, wow, that is so overwhelming that after one interaction with this man, we were able to create a, a space where he knew he was going to be included. He was going to be loved. He was going to be welcomed no matter what. And it was really so um, life-giving. So for our family, that's one way that we do it. But you have to be brave. It may not be graceful, but I it might cost you a little bit of your personal space, and it's going to cost you some time and attention. But that's one way that you can include people in your world. Yeah, that's that's something that we do, and there really are. We've heard tens and tens, and we'll believe thousands of stories of people who have supernatural interactions with people just because they ask, hey, can we pray for you? Uh, but hey, so we want to wrap up, and I want to encourage you, what is one way that you can include people into your world this week? So what into your places, into your spaces, again, whether it's at a table when you're out to eat, whether it's at a practice field, whether it's at work, whatever it might be, God's going to give you an opportunity. I believe right now the Holy Spirit's given you in your mind right now your next place where you can include someone into your world so that you can win your world. I want to encourage you when the Holy Spirit prompts you for you to be obedient. Like Rachel said, it may not be graceful. You may not have all the answers. God didn't have ask you to have all the answers. God just asked you to be obedient. So we love you. We believe in your purpose, which is to win the world. And we're excited to honor you and to serve you. And I really can't wait to hear the stories of what God does through you. So we love you. We'll see you next week.